Welcome to my channel friends today, I'm going to explain a thriller film called, Evil Intent, released in the year 2019. So without wasting time, let's the explanation begin. At the start of the film, we witness the care of an elderly patient, overseen by a kind and attentive nurse named Gwen. The patient, struggling for breath, requests an increase in oxygen supply. However, Gwen, in a shocking turn of events, turns off the oxygen and manipulates the air tube, depriving the patient of vital air, this sinister act results in the patient's heart coming to a standstill. Gwen then deceptively engages in shopping for a blue coat, luring doctors to the patient's side. While a physician works desperately to revive the patient's heart, Gwen stands at the doorway, her chilling smile betraying her malevolent intent. Thankfully, the patient's life is spared by the physician's swift action, Upon observing the patient's precarious condition, Gwen walks away, a disturbing satisfaction in her demeanor. The scene transitions to a spacious house inhabited by a charming couple, Mira and Todd, and their son Max. Max approaches his parents with a concern about his legs, as he battles muscular dystrophy, necessitating the use of crutches. As the family engages in conversation, their in-home nurse, Gwen, arrives. Max shares a cheerful rapport with his nurse, oblivious to the sinister episode she had been part of, during a family breakfast. Max inadvertently drops his crutch, prompting Gwen to offer her assistance. Unbeknownst to anyone, she intentionally loosens the end of the crutch, setting the stage for Max's later fall. Her persistent attempts to gain Todd's attention vex Mira, but she strives to remain composed. After Todd departs for work, Myra's friend, Karen, pays her a visit. In their conversation, Mira confides in Karen, expressing her concerns that both Max and Todd seem to favor Gwen over her. Gwen, with her calculating demeanor, deliberately eavesdrops on their discussion. Karen suggests that Mira explore alternative nursing options and check references for potential replacements for Gwen. However, Mira hesitates, convinced that Gwen has been a good caregiver to Max. While deep in conversation, a loud crash outside startles them. Mira rushes to investigate, directing her frustration at Gwen. Yet, it turns out that her son, Max, had accidentally broken his crutches, diffusing the tension. In the quiet of the night, Mira pondered her reaction and realized she may have been overthinking things. The following day, she approached Gwen with an apology. In a gracious gesture, Gwen offered to brew some tea. Little did they know that the unfolding horror would soon grip their family. Mira, seeking support, had recently joined a group where she shared her heart-wrenching story of discovering her son's battle with muscular dystrophy. Tears welled up as she recounted the painful past. Upon returning home from the session, Gwen continued to serve her tea, lulling her into a deep slumber. Dr. Keller paid a visit to provide Max with new crutches, as per Myra's request. Strangely, Gwen intercepted and prevented her entry, her behavior raising suspicions in the doctor's mind. Dr. Keller sensed a familiarity but ultimately dismissed it, under the cloak of darkness, Gwen confronted the lady from the support group. It dawned on Mira that this lady was the same doctor who had saved Ida from the brink of death. Before the realization could fully sink in, Gwen silenced the doctor and hastily fled the scene. Simultaneously, Mira unknowingly connected with a man named David, who faced similar challenges with his child. They engaged in a chat, yet what Mira didn't realize was that she was conversing with the sinister nurse using a voice-altering program. The following morning, while the family gathered for a meal, Gwen and Karen made an unexpected appearance. In an unfortunate mishap, Gwen had tea spilled on her, prompting Mira to assist her husband in removing his shirt. Gwen's lingering, lustful gaze didn't go unnoticed. Later, she offered to take the soiled clothes to the laundry but surreptitiously indulged in inhaling his scent, an act that was witnessed by Karen. Nightfall brought another call from David, who flirted with Mira, yet again, Gwen's cunning plan to disrupt the family. As soon as the call ended, Gwen appeared in the kitchen, questioning Mira about David and implying that she had been present all along, Mira became distracted, nearly reaching for the wrong detergent. Gwen guided her back to reality, though not without expressing her dark thoughts. 
On her way to her room, Gwen crossed paths with Todd and reported Myra's online interaction with a particular man. However, Todd dismissed the matter as insignificant, and they parted ways, with Gwen embracing Todd momentarily. In the early morning, as they chatted in the kitchen, she made her first move on Todd. Just minutes later, Gwen tried to lure him herself. However, their attempts were abruptly interrupted by Mira, who entered the kitchen to call her husband. To everyone's astonishment, she had prepared an entire meal, serving as a stark departure from her usual behavior. Seizing the opportunity, she offered Mira a cup of tea, unknowingly laced with a sedative. The effects of the drugged tea soon took hold of Mira. While climbing a staircase, her balance faltered, and Gwen guided her to a chair where she slipped into a deep slumber. She remained in a dazed state throughout the day, and even into the night, her vision remained blurred. However, during this time, she received a message from an imposter posing as David. As dawn broke, Mira was still in a deep sleep, causing Todd to grow increasingly concerned. When he picked up her phone and discovered the message concerning David, he began to wonder if Mira was involved with a man named David, when Mira finally awoke, she was still weakened, and Gwen continued to be exceedingly kind to her, causing Mira to feel guilty about her prior animosity towards her. Later, she received a message from the real David, the one she had been conversing with, warning her not to trust the imposter. In response, she decided to meet with the genuine David. Unfortunately, her misstep was sharing this with Gwen, who deliberately overheard the conversation, intending for Todd, who had been eavesdropping, to hear everything. The following day, she rendezvoused with the authentic David at a restaurant, where he clarified that he didn't have a son, let alone one afflicted with muscular dystrophy. He explained that his wife, Laurel, had succumbed to lung cancer after discontinuing her medication upon interacting with someone online. He believed that the person who had impersonated him was responsible for her death. Their conversation ended there. Meanwhile, Todd, who had secretly trailed his wife, mistakenly interpreted their meeting as an affair, plunging him into a deep despair. While both couples were absent from home, Karen paid a visit. Gwen, assuming an authoritative demeanor, made it clear that she was aware of Karen's true intentions and had no intention of letting her plan fail. In a fit of anger, Gwen struck Karen with a heavy glass, leading to the unfortunate demise of the latter. While attempting to dispose of Karen's lifeless body, Todd called her. In a desperate bid to maintain control, she took a dire step and ended Todd's life. Mira sensed something was amiss when her husband failed to return home early, Gwen surreptitiously took the knife Mira had been using for cooking and concealed it in her bag. Later, she paid a visit to David and confessed to being responsible for his wife's murder, stating that her motive was to make him marry her. David, consumed by rage, confronted Gwen, and in the ensuing struggle, she fatally stabbed him with the knife. Quickly, she fled the scene. On another night, Todd returned home inebriated, and Gwen feigned a caring demeanor, assisting him to his room. However, her intentions took a sinister turn as she began to undress him, only to be rebuffed by Todd. Undeterred, Gwen persistently made advances, but Todd rejected her advances, leaving her to depart the room with a heavy heart. The following morning, Gwen feigned ignorance and manipulated Todd into believing he had acted inappropriately towards her the previous night. She cleverly sowed doubt in his mind, leading him to apologize for any perceived misconduct. When Mira awoke, she discovered a note from Gwen alongside her morning tea, raising suspicions about Gwen's true nature. Rushing to the kitchen, Mira examined the tea and discovered unusual substances. Her search led her to Gwen's room, where she found incriminating evidence in the form of strange drugs. Upon realizing Gwen's presence, Mira hurriedly exited and pretended nothing was amiss. As Mira prepared to have another cup of tea, Gwen offered her another beverage and pretended to drink it before departing with her son for his physical therapy. Once they had left, Mira returned to Gwen's room to record the evidence and contacted her husband. However, he remained preoccupied with accusations of infidelity. Gwen returned home to find that Mira was awake and aware of her actions. Fearing exposure, Gwen lured Mira by pretending that something had happened to her son. 
Mira noticed blood and became worried for her child. Gwen persuaded Mira to follow her, but Todd's sudden return caused panic. He spotted Myra's bag in a video she had recorded in Gwen's room, raising suspicions, Gwen took Mira to a secluded house and locked the door. Revealing her psychopathic tendencies, she justified her intent to kill Mira as a form of therapy to heal herself. Mira, terrified and cornered, sobbed uncontrollably. Gwen disclosed her dark secrets, admitting to multiple murders and announcing her intention to end Myra's life slowly. A fierce struggle ensued, with Gwen attempting to use a nearby knife. Mira narrowly avoided the fatal blow, eventually mustering the strength to grab a nearby kettle and delivering a powerful blow to Gwen's head, ending her reign of terror. Mira fled the house. Several months later, life returned to normal for the loving family, and during a joyous outing, they shared heartfelt conversations and embraced one another. On that note movie ends, so friends that's all in today's video, if you like this video please hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel, I will meet you in the next video, till then, peace out.